the time of making this video, Star Wars Celebration 2019 is in full progress. However, if Disney CEO Bob Iger is to be believed, there really isn't all that much to celebrate. In an interview published on April 12th, he stated that following the release of Episode 9, which we've since learned will be called Rise of Skywalker, Star Wars would be taking a hiatus from the big screen and instead shift its focus to the small screen, more specifically to the Disney streaming service, Disney+. In my opinion, this is in some sense an admission of defeat, at least for the time being. In this editorial, I will elaborate on why I think that, by first going through Iger's exact words and plans for Star Wars. Then I'll put them into a wider context and explain why this moving of goalposts could be taken as an admission of sorts that Star Wars has failed in what Disney wanted it to do when they acquired the property. Iger told Bloomberg that he's not at all concerned that consumers may be overexposed to the Star Wars brand, but the film franchise will go on hiatus after Episode 9 in December. He went on to say that there are other Star Wars movies in development, but Disney has not yet announced them. During the big screen hiatus, Disney will be focused on making content for its streaming platform, Disney+, Plus, which will see the release of the first ever live-action Star Wars TV series, The Mandalorian. Disney Plus will incidentally also feature another live-action Star Wars series and the animated show Clone Wars. According to Iger, the move to TV demonstrates that the Star Wars creators at Disney's Lucasfilm are being innovative, and he thinks Star Wars Episode IX will be a hit. Bloomberg added that this year is an important one for Star Wars and Disney, as Star Wars-themed lands opens in the Disney theme parks in both California and Florida. But there is a disturbance in the force, as they put it. Solo flopped, and Star Wars merchandise sales have declined for two years in a row. Bloomberg also added that no less an authority than actor Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker himself, suggested that audiences may fall prey to Star Wars fatigue in an interview earlier this week. Let us begin with the tired notion that audiences are experiencing Star Wars fatigue, as Bloomberg pointed out, that Mark Hamill more or less has stated. That came from a podcast with The Hollywood Reporter, in which Hamill said that, I'm not going to tell them how to run their business, but is there a possibility of Star Wars fatigue? Yeah, I think there is. I've experienced it to a certain degree. But they never listen to my ideas anyway, so who needs them? That latter salty reply is probably in reference to how much he opposed Ryan Johnson's take on Luke Skywalker in The Last Jedi, and how his objections were summarily ignored. Be that as it may, I do think a term like Star Wars fatigue is unfortunate, as it implies that overexposure is the reason why audiences are tuning out, as if the total of four Star Wars films released in the past four years represent such an avalanche of Star Wars movies that it was just too much for the audience to handle. Now to be fair, Bob Iger didn't bring up Star Wars fatigue, it was Bloomberg that did that. Iger said that he wasn't worried about Star Wars overexposure at all, which only means he knows very well there is no reason to. In the same time frame, Star Wars allegedly overwhelmed fans with four movies. Marvel has released no less than nine, all hits, and the next one out, Avengers Endgame is poised to shatter records left and right. I don't think there is so much Star Wars fatigue as there is Star Wars despondency, brought on by franchise mismanagement. That Bob Iger is saying Star Wars, the world's biggest film franchise up until the MCU overtook it, is in need of a hiatus. I interpret as an admission that he's very well aware of how poorly it indeed has been managed. As is his job as Disney CEO, He's trying to frame this as a deliberate and innovative move initiated by Lucasfilm, but that is pure spin. I assure you that no one at Lucasfilm ever called Iger up and said, hey, let's skip that thing where we put billion grossing blockbusters in theaters for a few years and put Star Wars exclusively on Disney Plus instead. That's where all the cool kids are. No, I think the move to Disney Plus was mandated by Bob Iger himself. He is no doubt right that episode 9 is going to be a hit, and a massive one at that. But after that, the Skywalker saga is reportedly done, 
and based on the declining toy sales. One could argue that these new Star Wars movies have failed to spawn the necessary brand goodwill for the franchise to continue on the big screen without the Skywalkers. That being the case, it is probably Iger's reasoning that at this point, it would probably be better to use Disney Plus as the venue to launch a new Star Wars incarnation without the Skywalkers, and to try to establish the Star Wars brand itself as something to follow, regardless of the characters in it. Also, putting the next Star Wars incarnation on Disney Plus comes with two additional advantages. The first is that putting a new Star Wars series exclusively on Disney Plus is going to drive a lot of traffic to Disney Plus, and thus away from the competition, like Netflix. The second is that if, and I'm not saying they will, but if, the new Disney Plus Star Wars incarnations should fail relative to expectations, then that can be obscured a lot easier on the streaming platform than at the box office, where any underperformance is much more visible. So it absolutely makes sense that Star Wars takes a hiatus from the big screen and tries to rebuild on the small, and helps promote Disney Plus in the process. But make no mistake about it, that is not what Disney bought Lucasfilm and Star Wars for. When Disney paid $4 billion for Lucasfilm and Star Wars, they did it with the intention of putting a new Star Wars movie in theaters ideally every year, and have them all be monstrous hits and cultural events, produce a bunch of spin-offs, and make a killing of the merchandise. Instead, the sale of the merchandise is in freefall. How long the post-Episode 9 big screen hiatus ends up being will depend on the audience response to Episode 9, and in that hiatus, the new incarnations of Star Wars are reduced to a means of pushing the digital service Disney+. Plus. To be clear, however unfortunate it may be from a certain point of view, there is nothing inherently wrong with Star Wars spin-offs being used to push Disney+, Plus. that is the direction the market is heading. Marvel spin-off series will be used to push Disney+, Plus too with the major difference that multiple MCU movies will still be dominating the big screen at the same time. Assuming Feige doesn't shift the direction of the MCU too radically following Avengers Endgame, that is. But for Star Wars, being shifted exclusively to Disney+, Plus, however temporarily, means that it will in some ways be reduced to the new Star Trek, another franchise that right now can't get a new movie off the ground, and has to settle for being used as a means to promote a streaming service. Do you think giving the Star Wars franchise a hiatus from the big screen is the right move? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, then please help share it and share your opinion in the comments. Midnight's Edge aims to give the most comprehensive analysis and commentary on genre culture and entertainment. If you would like to see more of our videos, then please subscribe, hit the bell icon, and remember to indicate that you would like to be notified when new videos are uploaded. If you really like what we do, then please support us on Patreon until a better alternative comes along, or send us a direct donation through PayPal. Also check out our sister channel Midnight's Edge After Dark for live shows and other rants. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and stay tuned for more here at Midnight's Edge.